Hello everyone, welcome to the Niche Fragrance Collector. It is all about amazing perfumes from all around the world. This is the NFC family, meaning these are individuals who have a direct or have influenced me in my niche perfumery journey. Michael, who are you, Michael? So, and how are we connected? Okay, so we're connected because, Marcello, you've been coming to the Zoom classes that we host here at Libertin Parfumerie. And who am I? I've been in the fragrance industry for nigh on 30 years. And fundamentally, I'm the training manager for Libertine Parfumerie, but I started from ground up. So working as a casual while I was studying at university um, back in the 80s with three fragrances only. Um, and wow. it was part of what was to become a grand multinational, which is, of course, L'Oréal. And they were Giorgio Armani, Ralph Lauren, uh, fragrances at the time and Drakkar Noir back in the back in right. the heyday. <laughs> but you've been in the industry for a very long time. Yes. Can I look? Let me show. Let me show you this photo. Sure. So this photo here. This is um, my very first masterclass about two and a half years ago. And now look at this photo. This is Michael in full flight, and you can see that he is in the zone. He is sharing about something that he is. I mean, he was born for the stage. For this masterclass, what happened to me was I stumbled into this thing. I was running late, we had five minutes to go. I walked in, and Michael turned to me, and he's like, Marcello, so good to see you. Come on in. <laughs> We're about to start, so take a seat. Now, he said it in such a gregarious way, such an a, a, amicable way that I actually thought I knew Michael even my son who came with me he's like do you know him I'm like, I have no idea who this guy is <laughs> but this is Michael this is Michael this is you man you've got this way of connecting with people even though as you mentioned we've been doing this via zoom you have a way of connecting with people of a way of sharing your passion for fragrance and for perfumery your knowledge it's infectious i remember you strutting in and and me calling out to you and you were i could see that you were slightly taken aback but i wasn't sure if it was pure shock or what it was but obviously you enjoyed the experience which is great uh, look i went there just to find out about clive christian and i walked out buying two perfumes that's your power my friend that's the ability that you have to to just I guess if you, if you love perfumes, then don't be in the same room with Michael because you're going to end up buying stuff. So anyway. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm passionate about fragrance, Marcello, yeah. because fragrance yeah. fundamentally is the ultimate accessory. It precedes right. you when you walk into a room. People will smell you before they even have an opportunity to look at you front on. And yes. it, it, it really, it, I find fragrance very, very empowering. And obviously, mm. the better the fragrance, in my opinion, the more empowering you become and empowered right. therefore. And everything you've just shared, I, I am right behind. I, 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 you know, I love perfume, I love for what it does. Uh, and I do love niche perfumery. And you've actually taught me to love it even more so because of the, the process that goes into the craftsmanship, the artistry, uh, and really everything that I share really is I, I'm taking a leaf out of your book, to be honest, Michael. Oh. I, the, the way that I do things is very much the way. So you're you're my you're the you're the sensei. I'm only the the mere grasshopper. Um, Not uh, at the, all. I I think what what you do, Marcello, is perfectly educate the marketplace. And I think right. niche perfumery is so important now because it is really a dying craft. If you look at the way right. a lot of multinationals are producing fragrance, this is ultimately a craft that brings fragrance up to the level of a reserve cognac or a whiskey right. that's been um, distilled over a 40 plus year period. It, it, right. it, it really works in exactly the same way. Please, I want to walk through these fragrances. Sure. I'm excited about them. So, so tell me, where do you want to start? I'm actually going to spray on skin because I want to experience them. But uh, where course. would you like to start? I think let's start with one of my favorite fragrances, which is the Bond Number no. 9 Shea Bond. Yep, and awesome. this is an extraordinary brand. It was introduced into the marketplace by um, Larisse Rami, and she's yep. based in New York. 
and she wanted a brand that celebrated everything that her wonderful city encompasses. And what I right. love about this incredible fragrance is the very, very astute aromatic signature that comes through. And I really love that top note, those incredible citrus mm. top notes that we enter into. And this yep. incredible mate tea with violet leaves. I love that greenness that, that comes through very, very quickly. So that opening is very vibrant and familiar. It comes in beautifully fresh, but then it does this left turn very quickly. Maybe it's that mate that you just mentioned, because mate can be a little bit on that bitter side. Correct. Uh, it's, but it's beautiful. Uh, this, is, this one here, as an aromatic masculine fragrance, this is, uh, this is really special. I've always found it a standout, and it, it's a great right. summertime go-to as well, with the warmer yep. weather starting to ramp up. This is a fantastic fragrance, and I really love the way it goes into the beautiful cedar wood, sandalwood signature in the base as well. It's really yep. an extraordinary fragrance. Now, which one do you have next as our So, lineup? ultimately, the fragrance that I feel sits at the top of the pinnacle. And this right. is Elysium by Roja Dove. At the top of the pinnacle, I'm like, ooh, if it's not Elysium, I'd be surprised what it is, you know? It is absolutely Elysium by Roja Dove. Yeah. Um, yeah. The master craftsman of global yeah. perfumery. I mean, yeah. there's fragrances which are beautiful, and also there's Roger Dove, and yeah. <laughs> that is next level. I don't know if you saw, I did a video on Elysium, so I own Elysium also. Yes. And I called it the perfume of the gods. I totally so, agree with you. For me, this one here, it has its own unique signature. It's so versatile. I've actually worn this in summer, in winter. It's just, it's just a rock and roll fragrance. It is the absolute perfect blend of citrus, herbaceous notes and woods. It, it, it characterizes like an aromatic fougere, but it actually falls yeah. into the dry wood category because right. the dry down involves a leather note coming through, that fantastic right. birch tar oil. And it's that leathery aromatic signature that makes this fragrance so distinctive. I've always wondered what it was in the base because it doesn't, it doesn't really fall into it like, so for me, I find that this is, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, this is for me very aromatic in, in the way that, even now I'm smelling it. Whereas this one here doesn't, it was aromatic, but not quite, you're saying it falls more towards the dry wood. Correct. That magnificent note of birch tar oil or what perfumery calls leather, gives it that right. incredible animalic, but smoky signature. Um, that is very, very typical of a dry woods fragrance. And when combined right. with cedar wood um, and also ombergris in this case, you get an incredible sort of neo-musky, woody, very, very yeah. dry note cutting through in the base. And I think that is the magic of Elysium because it actually weaves this incredible trail from fresh through to herbaceous and then it takes this very, very unusual twist in my opinion. And it attests right. to the craftsmanship and the absolute know-how of Roger Dove. It's absolutely incomparable. And so I'm gonna say every man needs to own this. Oh yeah, this is the one that does everything. If you want right. one perfect fragrance in your wardrobe and you don't want anything else, this is the one I recommend that any man should invest in. You've heard it here. And if anyone knows anything about anything, it's Michael. So take his word for it. This is the, this is the guy that you, need to, that you need to have in your collection. All right, let's talk about the last one here. So, tell me about uh, I'm Orchid Man. a fan of cognac and I'm right. also a fan of boxing. I'm a great boxing fanatic. And right. this story by Frappin, named The Orchid Man, was actually inspired by a real soldier in World War I. And his name right. was Michel Charpentier, who fought matches on the Western Front to earn money 
from other soldiers to be able to feed the hungry and the dispossessed in Belgium um, as the armies marched through. This is a story of leather boxing gloves, the salty smell of sweat. I know that sounds a bit crude, but when you think of it in terms of an orchestration of a fragrance, this is one of the most exciting masculine fragrances mm -hmm. alongside Roger and Cher Bond that I've experienced in quite a while. We spoke to David Frossard, the creative director of Frappan last week, and he right. said that he wanted, when he created this fragrance, he wanted to create a fragrance that reminded him of what elegant men wore in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. That's what inspired him to create The Orchid Man. I've got three fragrances on but it's holding its own. It's not getting overwhelmed by these other ones. Absolutely. And you'll pick up an oud signature and the right. oud comes through very, very richly in the bass note. I have to say, Marcello, I'm not an oud fan, but this yes. fragrance I gravitate towards very quickly. What I want you to do for me is to smell Elysium and then yes. smell Orchid Man. And you'll see what I mean when I talk about dry wood signature with leather. Right. You'll yep. pick up a somewhat of a similarity weaving between these two fragrances. Michael, all three of these fragrances, you know, when you sent them to me, because they, I felt that they were a little bit sort of aromatic dry wood, but all three of them are, are so distinct that, that you can't say that they that this one is similar to that one, which is, they're all individual. They, they are all individual here. Absolutely, and that's why I chose them. And these three are my staples, my mainstay. Right, I love if, it. if I had to take fragrances um, and was deserted on a desert island, I, there was a plane crash and I was stranded on an island, I'd want to be <laughs> stranded with these three. I'd be right. very, very happy thereafter. I would thought I was the only crazy person that had oh, that sort of mentality. For not me, at it's, all. It's, Clive, it's Clive Christian X masculine for some reason. That fragrance, I just love it. I, I just want to take it with me everywhere. Absolutely. Just, yeah. Michael, master or oh, sensei or oh, great oh, one? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. Honestly, Michael, you, my friend, I, I, I love listening to you. I love the, the knowledge that you share. Gentlemen, if you're not familiar with these particular fragrances, guess what? Libertine Perfumery actually have it in their collection. And they're very generous in that they are sponsoring the NFC or my, the Niche Fragrance Collector channel. You can get 10% off your online orders. The other beautiful thing about Libertine is that when you buy from them, they are so generous. They'll send a whole bunch of extra samples that you can experience other fragrances. Michael, I wanna thank you for your time. I appreciate you sharing these with, uh, with me and with us. So we're gonna do another video, which is the hidden gems that are out there. So, so fragrances that you just need to know about, Michael's gonna share, but that's on the next episode coming out soon. Thank you again, Michael. Thank you, Marcello, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care.